The subject I have chosen for today's khutbah reclaiming our dignity reclaiming our status and muqam every time you hear about muslims you always hear negative social media print media and recently during this fifa tournament you have seen the europe especially one country was throwing as much trash as they could about the values and the morals and the practices and about the image of muslims and our youth they hear nothing about islam but negative so today inshallah my reflection will be after listening to khutba about hazrat umar razi allah taala anhu that we should be proud about our deen that we have such icons in our history that these icons make us to feel proud about islam and today i'm going to walk you through some chapters of history that we should know and we should feel proud about our deen because until and unless my brothers and my sisters we are not going to come out this mindset of slavery we will not be able to pass on this deen in a dignified way to our future generation and i say enough is enough and you might have heard the fifa president when he said he is from europe he said what europe has done in last 3000 years if they repent and if they ask forgiveness and if they want to pay back for next 3000 years still they will not be able to do the justice this is not any muslim saying this is said by one of the person from the european country my brothers and my sisters you know for us as a muslim this phenomena of nationalism is a new phenomena that this is saudi arabia this is pakistan this is india for 1300 years muslims have always lived as one nation as one umma there was no division this is just last 100 years that we are living under the banner of nationalism that i am more proud of pakistani than i am muslim this is a new phenomena for muslims and inshallah in next 15 20 minutes i am going to give you some history and understanding of the issue i am going to take you back in 12th and 13th century and you see mongols they attacked muslims and you know how many muslims they killed according to historians they killed about 37 to 60 million muslims 11% of the world population was vanished but you see we reemerged as a umma we came back out of that crisis even though we lost so many lives we lost so many countries we lost so much but still we were able to come back as a umma as one umma the reason was our institutions were saved our tahzeeb our culture our religion our mazhab our deen the basic institution of our community the home was saved our sisters they have saved this deen in their heart and when the time came they were able to raise a new generation which has confidence about their deen so even though what happened in 12th and 13th century we were able to come back then what happened in last 100 years when most of the muslim countries were colonized and most of the muslim countries were colonized and when the people they have left the muslim land they have left muslim land with bleeding economy with corrupt culture with corrupt literature 
by demoralizing self-esteem of Muslims, by giving them morals and values which are totally against their religion. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. When Muslims were colonized, and you know when this happened after the Ottoman Empire fell in 1922-1923, when British came to India, you know the GDP of India was 27%. GDP of India was 27% means the total wealth of the world out of that 27% contribution was of India. And you know GDP of United States today to the world how much it is? 13%. Can you believe just India was having GDP of 27%. And you know when British left India, what was the GDP of India? 3%. 3%. When British came to India, the literacy rate of Punjab, the literacy rate of males in Punjab, just one province of Punjab, went down during their tenure by 50%. What are we talking about? They, how they left these colonized countries. According to one calculation, the adjusted value of the wealth British had taken away from India is $45 trillion. They developed the railroad service. There is a book, you know, written by Shashi Tharoor. It's an Indian diplomat. And you can go and Google that book. The title of that book is Inglorious Empire. What has happened to in India. 45 trillion dollars, these railroads were built so all the raw material could be taken to the ports and will be exported. And when they developed these railroads, if they were supposed to pay 100 dollars, they paid 1000 dollars because contractors were from their own countries. And not only that, you know, if this was just a money issue, we may have re-emerged, we may have reunited ourselves, we may have come back again, like happened in 12th and 13th century, again as an ummah. On top of that, they planted the seeds of hate. They planted the seeds of division among Muslims. No country, you can go and look, no country on the map of the world they have left without causing and leaving some disputes. Go in India, go in UAE, go in Qatar, go in Guyana, go to Sudan, go to Egypt, go to Kuwait, go to Saudi Arabia, go to Jordan, go to Israel, you name it, you, any country after they left, they left a dispute and bleeding economy and hate and division among Muslims. You know, I'm not here to play blame game, but we should know the realities. And not only that, they have corrupted, they have corrupted the minds of the Muslims of these lands. They are still struggling to overcome that mind. The corrupt literature, you know, they call us that Muslims are bad about this and that. But wallahi, our problem is that Muslims today, they are like an orphan. There is no spokesperson for Muslim. There is nobody who can fight the case of Islam. That's why I say to our youth that information is available there. Brothers, we should not be on a defensive foot all the time. These people, after they have left Muslim countries, they still do not want to leave us alone. They still want to make sure the morale of Muslim youth should always stay down. That Muslims should always blame themselves. Muslims should always feel low and down about themselves. And this is going on up until today, until and unless we will understand the problem, we will not be able to solve our problem, my brothers and my sisters. You know, most of us, we equate prosperity and success 
with political power and money. This is our human nature. But we don't ask people that how they have acquired this wealth and this political power. I am better off without wealth and political power if I am standing on my morals and my values. I don't want to have political power and wealth at the cost of killing millions of people. You know the history of Islam, if you read and go through the history of Islam, the history of Islam is full of shining icons. That Islam has always given power to the one who had no power in the history. They blame Islam about the woman, that Islam does not give right to the woman. Go and read the history of Europe. That what Europe has done to women up until recently, most recently, like before the World War II. What Islam did without any group of asking for rights of women, without any movement, without any uprising. Islam is the religion who has empowered women when there was nobody to raise the voice of a woman. Islam is the first religion has given part in inheritance. Islam is the first religion that which he has given the status to a woman that she is a queen of the house. The status as a mother, status as a wife, status as a sister and status as a daughter. My brothers and my sisters. And if you go and read the history of Europe, I don't know how many of you have traveled to Europe. You go England, you go Switzerland, you go France, you go Germany, you go Austria, you go Sweden, you go all these different countries. And if you will take the tour, I want to see the history of this country. I can tell you and because I have visited all these countries, they will show you nothing. But you know, this journal did this. We fought war with, if you go to France, they will show we fought with British for 100 years. We did this, we conquered this, we conquered that. Either there will be a history of war or there will be history of love. Love of man and woman. Love of king and the queen. But there is nothing else more than that. But look at the history what Umar Raziyallah no has done, what he has given, a new ideas to the nation, having social security, taking care of little kids, having your police system, having your you know, soldiers and army recruited. Islam's contribution to the world is unparalleled, is unparalleled. The only problem is that we are always, because this is part of the game, this is the part of the game to keep blaming Islam and Muslims. So they are always on defensive. They are always on defensive. They will not ask the question. But as I said, enough is enough. Time has come, my brothers and my sisters, that we should know the history. We should, instead of blaming ourselves, we should know that we have to give confidence to our youth. So in future, they will be the true representative of this deen. Not only that, their contribution of moral corruption. You know, all this reaction you see all around the world about LGBT, atheism, and all this is a reaction of the Europe because the Europe, what they have done in the form of religion to the people, people have reacted against religion throughout the history for 1300 years. And I can guarantee you, I can challenge this for 1300 years after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muslims were never in the history of Islam were rebellious against Islam, against their own religion. It had never happened in 1300 years that Shabab, the youth of Islam, will go against Islam. This happened because what religion has done in Europe and because of that, there is a reaction against religion. 
and that's why you see individualism that's why you see atheism that's why you see these lgbt and all these movements and reaction this is a reaction what religion of europe has done to their people and we are not immune to that because we live in a global village global village that we are all interconnected with each other so our ranks are also not protected because of that reaction my brothers and my sisters so we have to reclaim our dignity our waqar our muqam let me tell you one thing leave this dunya when you depart with dignity with waqar leave your legacy and your legacy will be that you will give confidence to your family to your future generation and that can only happen once we come out of this mentality of slavery rabi bin amir razi allah taala ano what he said in the castle of rustam those words should be remembered he said prophet sallam came so he can take us away from all the false gods and he can give us in the slavery of only one true god and that is allah subhanahu wa taala and once we become slave of one true god then all the fear should be gone you know that book which i mentioned in front of you about uh, in glorious empire by shashi tharor he is an indian guy he is not muslim and he says in the same book you know look at the difference when muslims came to india what they did and what british did when they came to india and i just told you what british did to india but same indian guy he says that muslims came to india the thing they did they enriched the local community they empowered the local community that's why muslims were able to make place in the hearts of the people of india that's why muslims were able to rule india for 700 years and that is another message for you and me when we live in this country that we should enrich the local community we should be part of the local community we should invest you know as a muslim we should always be on the giving end not on the taking end we should on the receiving end on the on the giving end teach your kids that i am pakistani but i am more proud to be a part of the ummah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam my country comes second my first identity is my deen and we should all be proud of that i will prefer to be to a jordanian brother over my pakistani brother if there is a need comes to both of them this should be my spirit we should try to plant the seeds of this concept of umma my brothers and my sisters we have big responsibility as i said you know on our shoulders and that responsibility is that we should nurture our kids we should raise our future generation in a way that they can feel proud about islam yesterday i was listening to one of the brother in other masjid and he was mentioning that youth is leaving islam they are calling themselves ex muslims and this is happening because of you and me because we as a parent we fail we fail to give them the confidence about our deen i myself i am shy about my deen when it comes to the practice my deen i am on the back bench i turn my back you know when it comes to morals taught by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam how my son and daughter will feel proud about this deen when they see us as a parent that we had we give no value to our deen when salah time comes when it time comes that i will not lie when time comes that i have to defend the dignity and waqar of islam if they don't see me taking any stand don't expect from them brothers and sisters that they will take any stand let me tell you another very dangerous thing you know whatever moral corruption we see today moral corruption we see today wallahi the past generation we as a first immigrant generation we are still alive we know our values 
we know our morals we have gone through some teachings and some training that we have still some resistance we can take a little stand imagine four generations from now what will happen if we will not plant the seeds in a right way today then what i see down the road is a dark future but if we will be able to fulfill our responsibility our youth they have the potential that they can turn this whole situation around and inshallah muslims in this land and all around the world they will live with dignity waqar and they will reclaim their muqam of the past allah akbar